But in the eighth chapter, John, those sharing with us on television as well, Jesus is on the Mount of Olives where he has refused to stone the woman caught in adultery, but simply tells her to go and sin no more. Jesus continues to teach the Jews who were listening to him. So beginning in verse 31, the word of God says, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sinned is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence. And you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answer. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the thing your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. <laughs> For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet, because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Wow. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, the devil is a liar. Come on, say it one more time. The devil is a liar. My text verses uh, actually describe a paternity fight between Jesus and the Jews who were superficially believing in him because he has stated to the Jews who have believed him. You see, Jesus is encountering what pastors and preachers deal with every Sunday, especially in an audience this, this size. Those who are paying attention to the message but without committing to Christ. Like these believers that Jesus was talking to, it is possible to say you believe in the message, and yet at the end of the message, you don't repent, you don't get baptized, you don't be filled with the Holy Spirit without being born again. That's the crowd that Jesus is addressing along with the religious leaders, the scribes, and the Pharisees. Ladies and gentlemen, a paternity fight seeks to determine who a person's father is. Determining who a person's daddy is has made several people rich, like Mari and Jerry. Andrew, you are not the father. <laughs> Why 
of y'all watch that stuff? <laughs> no intellectualism, people in the lower levels of life. You're not the daddy. lot of name calling going on in this eighth chapter. A lot of name calling. Jesus identifies himself with his father in heaven. But Jesus identifies not everyone, but the Jews listening to him with their father, the devil. The Jews then told Jesus his daddy was not the heavenly father, but that he was a Samaritan. I mean, we got some Serious signification going on up in here, as we say. They signify. You see, you are Samaritan, Jesus, which was the hated half-breed cousins of the Jews. And not only that, they went so far in John 8, verses 48 and 49. They went so far as to say, well, Jesus, you demon-possessed. They said, you may be the one going out casting out demons, but you demon-possessed too. Nature is determined by birth, and birth is determined by paternity. If God is your father, then you have God's holy nature living on the inside of you. That's why the Bible says in John 3 and 3 so clearly, Jesus says to Nicodemus, said, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Peter puts it this way in 2 Peter chapter 1, talking about this divine nature and God living on the inside in verses 3 and 4. He says, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us, the believers, hallelujah, he called you by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. You see, if the devil is a person's father, then that person shares in his evil nature. Jesus identifies several things that made these people the children of the devil. Number one, he said, you don't love God. He said that in, in verse number 42. Said, if God were your father, you would love me because I came from God. The second thing, Jesus said, well, well, you don't even understand what I'm teaching. But if you understand God, you then understand Jesus, you understand his word. The third thing, he said, they rejected the truth and they tried to kill Jesus because he spoke the truth. In verse number 45, Jesus says, Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. The Jews tried to argue that since they claimed to be Abraham's children, then God must be their father. Jesus refutes that claim as well in verse number 39. When they declare Abraham is their father, Jesus says if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things that Abraham did. As it is, you determined to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham didn't do that. You are doing the things your own father does. Seven times in my text verses, Jesus uses the word truth. Even though the Jews rejected Jesus, he told them the truth anyway. Now listen carefully to me. You cannot be a person of character unless you tell the truth. I'm going to work with this message. Character is determined by how truthful you are. You can't be a person of integrity, a person of honesty, unless people can believe that what you tell them is truthful. It was so funny when my kids were coming, uh, you know, kids lie all the time. They'll tell you they ain't ate no cake chocolate all on their mouth. I didn't do it. Chocolate everywhere. And 
I say this to you parents that are gathered here today? You got to knock it out of them early. Now, let me say this to you. They're trying to knock it out. Don't you need it first knocking out of you? Because it's hard to knock out of your children what they visibly see you do. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of church this is. I just get all up in your house. You see, in the final analysis, it's just too much work to try to determine if a person is telling the truth or not. You're either a person of character whose word I can trust or you're not. And I ain't going to work like that. Come on and let me preach the message. The truth and lie go in opposite directions. This is the definition of a lie. A lie is a false statement made with a deliberate attempt to deceive. So if I ask you the time right now, you just say to me, well, I think it's 12 o'clock. Oops, it's 11.40. You didn't lie. You, just what you thought. There was no intent to deceive. See, what distinguishes a liar from a false statement is the intent behind what's wrong. If you are wrong and it was just an honest wrong, that's not a being a liar. But if you are wrong and you know the truth and you want people to believe you when you are know you lying, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of a liar. You got intent. Let me say this as a pastor because, see, sometimes y'all overrate my office. See, I'm the man of God. So people think when everybody come in my office, they tell the truth. But <laughs> not so. People lie up in my office all the time. But see, God is good. My friend Dan, I tell you, God know how to save a sinner. I wasn't the father of lies, but I was related. <laughs> so I knew about lying. And know what the scripture said. The scripture says that we should be wise as the serpent, but innocent as the dove. So believers are not supposed to be just a bunch of naive people. We're supposed to be able to know when people are lying to us. You see, ladies and gentlemen, people lie for a variety of reasons. I'll give you a short list. Y'all can add to it later. <laughs> people lie to cover up wrong. You can say amen. amen. People lie to protect themselves. Amen. People lie to look good. Amen. People lie to avoid punishment. Amen. I didn't do it, Your Honor. I didn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to jail. Ladies and gentlemen, people lie to gain financially, socially, or even politically. Glad they left. <laughs> well, I was going to say it anyway. <laughs> it was coming. I was just going to try to look over this way like this kind of. <laughs> uh, politicians lie on each other. Hard to tell when they're being truthful have professional lying coaches. And I'm going to tell you, just as a human being, not just as a pastor, I have huge problems with liars. I, because, see, the ultimate deceit of a liar that I find so amazing is that when you don't believe them, they get angry. Now, why you get angry about something you know ain't true? You don't never believe me. You lying. Mm-hmm. I was talking about politicians, wasn't I? <laughs> Hard to tell when they're being truthful. And someone who went early to school, they would say, well, George Washington never told a lie. I don't know if that's true or not. However, he entered politics when the country was very young. Let y'all work with that. When a person lies, they have broken a trust bond. Serious deception often makes it difficult, if not impossible, to trust the person again. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the further you stretch the truth, that's what people do. It starts off like this, and then we start stretching it and stretching it and stretching it and stretching it. And, stretching it. and if you keep stretching it, it's going to break. See, I endured pain for y'all just then, because you know that hurt. <laughs> Jesus declares the devil to be a liar. 
There is no truth in the devil. It is in his nature, said Jesus, and in his work to lie and deceive. Jesus even goes so far to declare the devil to be the father of lies. Now that, you can't get no lower than being the father of lies. Which tells us something in John 8 and 44. When Jesus calls him the father of lies, says he was a murderer from the beginning. Truth didn't abide in him. We learned something about lying. You see, lying is not just about something you do. Lying is ultimately about something you become. A liar is not just because they just lie. They become a person who lying is a way of life. Hmm. Maybe some conviction is going on around here. It's quiet. <laughs> the old-time saints used to call people who lied a lying wonder. <laughs> Say, you a lying wonder. I never knew or understood the wonder part, but in Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 and 8. See, we always talk about just terrible people all end up in hell, but I want you to know, know what the Bible says, if you believe the Bible. It says, he who overcomes, in verse 7, will inherit all this. I'll be his God, he'll be my son. But no. The cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual and moral, those who practice massive arts, the idolaters, and there it is, last but not least, all liars will have their place in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. As the father of lies, the devil is the originator of falsehood. The first lie in Scripture. Is found in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. See, some people think the first lie he told was to Adam and Eve. That's wrong. That's the second lie I'll be in in a moment. The first lie that the devil tells, which is in Isaiah 14, again in verse 12 to 15, is the first lie is he tells to himself. Hmm. Note what he says what the Holy Spirit says, how you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utter heights of the mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the grave. To the depths of the pit. So the first lie that Satan tells himself is that he can rise above his creator. That the creator who created him, that he will ascend and make his throne be higher than that of the one who created him. And the Bible says he was cast down. It's a rough thing when we lie to ourselves. The worst lie you can ever make is the lie you tell yourself that's necessary to make you feel good about yourself. The second lie he told to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, two key lies in chapter 3. He says, number one, you don't have to obey God. God told you that you could not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I will never understand why they didn't choose to eat from the tree of life. They deliberately chose not to eat from that tree. They chose to eat from the tree that God told them not to. And the Bible makes it clear the devil told them, even though God told you you can't eat from it, nothing's going to happen. In the Hebrew, it is in the emphatic. It said, you shall not surely die. Not only that, he tells them you can live without God directing your life. Did you note that? Because the Bible tells us in that Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 5, God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And you will what? Be like God, knowing good and knowing evil. What a terrible thing for human beings created by God Almighty to think 
we can live our lives without him directing it. Because, see, that's what the fall was ultimately all about. God, I don't want you to control my life. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, where I want to do it. Doesn't matter that you created me. I want to do my own thing. And so Adam ate. Eve deceived, but Adam, the scripture tells us, was not deceived. He wanted freedom from God. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. Let me tell you something I have learned as I have gotten older, and I'm really into God now. Any of the people in here really into God? I mean, he's, he's the, as they said, he's the strength of your life. He's the one you worship. He's the one you adore. It didn't start like that. When I first got saved, I was so scared of being saved, so scared of being baptized. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. When you get into God, and when God really gets a hold of your life, God shows you life from a perspective that you never understood. And I wish I had some people now who would tell me, you just wish you had got baptized earlier. You just wish you had gave your life to him earlier. Because when God is out directing your life, it is then and only then that you can make sense out of life and that life become worth living. Do I have some witnesses on the first floor? Do I have some witnesses in the balcony? God wants to direct your life, not so he can be controlling over your life. He wants you to have the best life that he intended for you to have. And you can't have it if he's not in it. (laughs) Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, by believing those lies, Adam and Eve brought physical and spiritual death to all mankind. The devil has been lying to mankind ever since. Tell your neighbor real fast that the devil is a liar. He says he's the most powerful of all. Yet he's really the prince of the power of the air. He's evil. And now on Halloween coming up all over the land be goose and Hanks and poltergeists and demons and all of these things designed. And, you know, I ain't never seen the Freddy movie. I ain't, and I won't watch Jason. And I didn't, never have him like that little Chucky fella either. <laughs> and I don't know about y'all, but I done reached an age where I want to enjoy movies. I don't want nothing going to scare me. Because I done learned living is scary enough. And I want you to be crystal clear as we talk about this. The devil is a liar because he presents Satan. Uh, Satan presents himself as if he's got all power and might. And evil is pervasive in our society. I'm not saying that at all. It is real. He is powerful. But he is, he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he made a vow. But Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, Jesus goes on the other side of the sea. He sees a man. And this man runs to him, demon-possessed. How he got free from that demon for just a moment, I don't understand. And the demons, he got so many, they call legion. And you would think with so many demons, they would take Jesus out. But that's not what happened. They wanted to know, Jesus, have you come to torment us? Before our time, and Jesus went and cast those demons into a a herd of pigs, and they were destroyed. Because you see, the Bible is true. In Psalm 62 and 11, the Scripture says, I have heard it spoken once. I have heard it spoken twice. Power belongs to God. Let your neighbor again say, the devil is a liar. Let me work with this. I'll only be before you just a few more minutes. The devil says to people that the things of this world can satisfy you. That's one of his biggest lies, that if you can just have more money, more wealth, more cars, more house, more men, more women, more men and women, that you can be happy. But Isaiah puts it this way. In Isaiah chapter number 55, he says these words that are important for us today. He says in the 55 verse 2, why do you spend money 
on that which is not bread. Why do you labor on that which what, class? Church does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the riches of fair. Another lie. I said the devil is a And this is huge. And it's a part of your responsive reading today. The devil says, when you need God, when you're going through, Satan whispers in your ear, where is your God? Oh, we're going to work with that one. Because I know too much of what y'all are going through. And he broke people up in the house, and he sick people up in the house. Anybody that done lost somebody recently, anybody that thought they had a job and they didn't get it, anybody who thought they were going to uh, make it through their marriage and it's not working out, the devil says to you, in the midst of your lowest times, he whispers. Did you see that in that Psalm 42 and 3? Did you look at your responsive reading? Note how it deals with it. I hope I'm preaching to somebody today. Look what David said. My tears have been my food day and night. Anybody know what it means to cry day and night? I'm trying to touch somebody. He says my tears have been my food. While men say to me under the influence of Satan all day, where is your God? I want you to know. You see it again. Sometimes you get this downcast. David said, why are you downcast, oh, my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. I will yet praise on my Savior and my God. Let me just take a minute and do a praise break in the house. For some- we hope that you have been blessed by this broadcast, and we look forward to you worshiping with us on Sunday mornings at our 1015 a.m. service. Also, we invite you to join us for our Tuesday night Bible study at 7.30 p.m. and Lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. Please visit us online at www.VictoryApostolicChurch.org. If this particular sermon blessed you and you would like to order the full broadcast worship service, please send a check or money order to Victory Apostolic Church. We would gladly accept your credit card purchase Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Please include the broadcast title and number along with your selected choice of media, CD or DVD. 